So my wife asked me to come up with a plan, something to cover this unused tub in our master bath. I mean, we've been in this house seven and a half years now, and she's probably used this thing two or three times. So it's really just a waste. It becomes a kind of catch all for, you know, dirty towels, bathing suits in the summertime, whatever. So she wants me to come up with something to cover it, to better use the space. So here's what I came up with. Not too bad. You guys gotta see how I did this. All right, so the first thing I had to do was come up with a platform, something to build everything else off of. Now there's a couple things that I wanted and a couple things I had to look out for. First, I wanted to, I didn't want to just lay down like a sheet of MDF or a sheet of plywood. I wanted to make sure it had access to the tub so that, you know, something I could open and we could store things like, you know, the bulk toilet paper packages from Costco, whatever, things like that. So I wanted to make sure I had that access. I also had to watch out for the spigot. Um, it sits really close to the tub. So I had to be really careful, really mindful of that. So here's what I came up with. So after taking a bunch of measurements, I figured two by threes with a half inch MDF top was perfect. It would clear underneath the spout and that would give me enough support to, to have this opening in it, to have a door to access the tub. Now, Again, after taking a bunch of measurements, I realized I had to clearance the corner, the bottoms of the two by threes, because where the vertical side of the tub meets the top of the tub, it's not square, it's kind of contoured. So in order to clear that curve, I just notched, I just cut the corners off the bottom of the two by threes. So let me slide this thing in place and I'll show you how it fits. So there's the platform in place. I just kind of radius this corner, just to make it look better than just a square corner. And I built it so that it comes up flush with the front. There's gonna be a piece of trim that comes down here. Uh, again, also because of the, the spout, I had to leave the MDF away from the side here a little bit. And all this will be covered um, in order to get it under the spout. Um, I also cut a hole because, you know, installing the parts, I bumped the valve and all of a sudden I had water here and I heard water dripping, couldn't figure out why. So I'm like, oh, I better cut a hole for the, the spout. Um, once everything's in place, that's not really an issue, but I'm not painting this right now because we plan on doing more work here in the bathroom and this will get painted when we paint the rest of the bathroom. So this is just gonna stay primered for now. But I did primer everything or all the MDF at least with kills indoor outdoor uh, stain blocking primer. I did a video on that that I'll link to up here somewhere on how to get a nice smooth surface when it comes to paint and MDF. So, you know, with this being in a bathroom, I mean, this bathroom is a good size, so it doesn't really hold moisture a lot. It doesn't have, I mean, it doesn't even have a door. So I'm not worried about warpage from that, but I figured got to protect the MDF as much as possible. So with the platform in place, now I can get, I started working on the back shelves. So let's get those in place. So when it came to building the back shelves, the first thing I did was build this two and a half inch tall riser. Now I built it so it comes right up to the edge of the opening. And I built it at two and a half inches because I'm gonna have probably half inch or eighth inch MDF on top of all this covered with foam, which then will get covered with material. And that way the cushion will sit right at or just below the bottom shelf. So that's why that's at two and a half inches. But with that built, then I could build the rear shelves. And there are the shelves in place. So I built it so that they come right up flush with the bottom of the window. And then on the bottom here, I did like a beadboard paneling inside there. Um, obviously I didn't paint the, or I didn't prime the, the bottoms. Never, no one's ever gonna see those, I'm not that worried about it. But on the back there, I did a beadboard so there's all that. And then I had to be real careful in measuring it because I couldn't bring it all the way to the side because of the spout or because of the handle. So it does sit short. Now what I should have done was probably bring this all the way to the wall, but you know, no one's ever really gonna see this. It's our master bath. So I mean, I can always cover that later with something, put decorations up there. That'll kind of disappear. 
So I'm not really worried about that. But I did have to just be mindful of the handle. I've already bumped it, like I said, a couple of times and that's what led to me drilling the hole there. So with all that in place, now I had to come up with a way to hide the spout and to hide the handle. So I'll get that in place and show you how I did that. All right, and there's what I came up with for the side. Now again, it's got that same beadboard pattern, the same beadboard panel right there. And this is what covers the valve, which is right about there. And the spout is up underneath there. And then just a couple of shelves with some more, some more beadboard back there. And then it all sits flush to the side. Now all I gotta do is add that front trim and do something about the hatch and then a cushion. All right, so now I got the trim in across the front. That's just a piece of like five and a quarter inch tall baseboard. And I left it, I put it on so that the, the curve part would be up on the top. And that way the top would just kind of flow right around. And I just kind of attached it to the two by threes with some finish nails. Um, now I'll put the, the hatch cover on. And for now, what I did was eventually I'm going to go and get and hinge, put some hinges on it. But I just took the piece that I cut out of the, out of the top to make the hatch. And I just cut a finger hole for it so it's easy to lift out. But eventually, like I said, it will get hinged eventually. So now I gotta put the, the uh, cushion in place. And there it is, guys. There's the mostly finished product. Like I said, nothing's been painted yet. Still needs to get a coat of paint, but all that'll happen once we do some more work here in the bathroom. But I got the, the cushion put together and all I did was I just got some, like a two by four pre-cut piece of a particle board, got some two inch foam from the, I think it was Joann's, and the fabric and then just put it all together and now I got a bench. So there it is guys, it's a real, it wasn't, it wasn't that hard of a project. There was definitely a lot involved as far as you know, getting all the measurements right and not making it look like it was just kind of slapped together. It's not just a board thrown across the top of the tub to, to kind of make it look like a bench. I mean, this thing, I am really happy with the way this thing turned out. Um, my wife really likes it. And I think, you know, once we get a good coat of paint on it and get the rest of the bathroom done, it'll just kind of all kind of blend together. So if you're like us and you got, you know, a tub that you don't really utilize, turn it into something functional. You know, I got storage underneath. I cleared up room in our closet by moving the towels out here. And it's just a good place to, you know, when you're getting ready in the morning, sit down, put your shoes on. I am really happy with this, guys. I appreciate you for watching. Hit that subscribe, hit the bell, and I'll catch you on the next one.